When you're looking at drawings, you're looking at like a rough draft for a painting can be very linear, planned, and structured. A few erasure marks to get things precise. The most interesting drawing, and drawing as a medium, as an art form, for me is uh, when I'm looking at it as a viewer, is improvisational drawing. Kerry Ross takes that to an even more intense level by starting with and incorporating accidents throughout her process. And so when you let literally fate and physics uh, conspire, the level of freedom in that and the level of um, confidence of an artist is, is A, it's rare, and B, that she pulls it off, that she makes these compelling drawings that are as structured as, as any pre-planned notion. What's special about them for me is that they, they're they almost finished paintings and yet they're still drawings. So there's that energy of the what might happen with the insistence, no, this is a painting that's gonna live on for generations and this object that's gonna carry today forever. Part of the reason that I wanted to stop and look at this particular piece is because I feel like it has elements of all of the different things that I love that are going on in other pieces throughout the whole show. Um, but they've all sort of found their way into this one uh, image. And so what I mean by that is, for example, Carrie and I have been talking about this sort of abstract, figurative kind of continuum. And so one of the things I love about a lot of the work is that even though it all very clearly reads as kind of a pictorial space with objects and figures and actions, this piece, if you take out these seven little trees right there and you just don't see them, this whole expanse doesn't even necessarily read as a horizon line anymore. It just reads as this very beautiful kind of gestural and then this more forceful and sort of four or five different kinds of abstraction or abstract expressionism. But then you put these tiny little marks, little ink, very little, couldn't be more schematic as far as describing a tree goes. And there's a couple of them and that's it. And then all of a sudden, this whole thing becomes a horizon line or a hilltop. And then you have this green color starting to read as like a meadow or a grass or a natural space. And then you have all this stuff starting to read as the sky or weather or atmosphere. And then you get this pictorial space and then all of a sudden this egg form, I mean it could very easily be a boulder, but you know if you look throughout the work that eggs are recurring imagery in the work. And all of the drawing that happens inside of it no longer takes away from it being this object that this figure is standing on that it reads really clearly. I know that there's a lot of accidental brilliance that kind of happened in here and a few kinds of discoveries and things that were like really worked at and worked at and then it looks really simple and intuitive. I love this fish mostly because Again, if you take out just its head, right? Just the head, you don't even take the whole fish, just take just the head out. All of a sudden, the whole thing becomes completely abstract, completely non-representational. It just becomes about the shapes, the colors, the textures, the tiny, tiny little mark making that's like super controlled, the splatters that are much less controlled and that kind of organic versus kind of ritualistic shapes and it it takes on a completely different kind of character once you see the whole creature you know abstract fish allegory and then all of a sudden there's narrative and like what does that mean and where does that come from and the symbolism that goes on in that
his work I think might be my favorite in the show, uh, partly because I just think the patience, folksy, ritual, decorative density of the way this hand is built is just really compelling as a matter of drawing. Like, not only because it's a hand, which kind of goes back to the artist and the sort of maker idea, but also because of how clearly made by hand, you know, one kind of tiny stroke at a time this is. And I think it really highlights the kind of beauty and the obsessive nature of the way that Carrie draws when she draws. But then when you really get into the works, you start to notice the palette is tertiary, the, the washes are really emotional, and again, if you just imagine yourself making these kinds of marks at that scale with that kind of density, the kind of experience that that is, uh, is very fraught psychologically. And so I think that there's a really interesting kind of paradox that happens between the, the way it looks and the way it feels.